I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on radicals. We'll see how to simplify the given expressions. To give you a variety, I've taken four examples. In one, we are adding the radicals. In the second, we're trying to multiply them, expanding. In the third, we are applying the distributive property. And in the fourth, we have a function which is very familiar to those who are doing solutions to quadratic equations. We'll see how to simplify this and then write the answer. Correct? So let's begin with part A, which is 2 square root of 32 plus 3 times square root of 50 minus square root of 200. Now working with radicals is to always look for factors in which one of them is a perfect square. So 32, for example, can be written as what? 16 times 2, right? I use 16 because 16 is 4 square. Perfect. Similarly, 50 is 2 times 25, right? So we could write this as 25 times 2. Now this decimal is not a decimal, but it is a product, okay? 200 can be written as 2 times 100. Now, 100 is a perfect square. 10 square is 100, right? So, the equivalent expression could be 16 is like 4 square, correct? So, 16 is like 4 square. So, let me introduce one more step here. You could think about 16 as 4 square. And then we have 2 here. Plus, similarly, 25 is 5 square times 2 minus 2 times 10 square. Now this step, some of you can really avoid this step. This is an extra step just to show you why we are taking out 4 outside, right? 4 square square root is 4. And therefore, we'll write this as 2 times 4 square root 2. Now this is not decimal, it's product, okay? Plus 3 times 5 square root 2. And here we can take 2 times 10 square root of 2, right? Now, these terms are all equivalent terms since we are using square root 2, same terms, right? Like apples, you can see. So, square root 2, consider them as apples. So, apples, adding apples and taking away apples. So, what we have here is 8 square root 2 and then we have plus 3 times 5, 15 square root 2 and 20 square root 2. We have to take away 20 add 8 and 15. So doing these operations from left to right, well, we could do minus 5 on 8, which gives us 3 square root 2 as our answer. Is that clear? So that is how we are going to solve such a question. I hope the steps are clear. Now let's take uh, part B, which is uh, finding the product. So we have here 3 minus 5 square root of 12 whole square. Now whole square really means you're multiplying the same term by itself. You could also use the quadratic formula which is uh, a we are using minus here a minus b whole square is a square minus 2ab plus b square right. So we'll use this formula to expand. So we get here 3 square minus 2 times 3 times that term, which is 5 square root 12, plus we have 5 square root 12 whole square. Okay? So that is what you get. Now 3 square is 9, 2 times 3 is uh, 6, 6 times 5 is 30, so we could write this as 30. Now square root of 12, we could write this as 4 times 3, correct? 4 is a perfect square and that's the reason. Now, squaring 5, we get 25. So, you have to square both the terms. And squaring square root gives you the number itself. Is that clear to you? Correct? Now, we get here 9. The numbers are 25 times 12. And this one, we can take 2 outside. Correct? So, I'm now writing 25 times 12 first. Okay? And then this number, which is... 30 times 2 can be taken out, so we'll write 2 in the bracket this time instead of those dots. 
does make sense to you. Correct? Now, 25 times 4 is 100. So, this is 4 and 3. So, 300, right? So, we have here 300 minus 30 times 2 is 60 square root of 3. Is that clear? So, that becomes the solution of part B, right? Now, let's take part C, which uh, let me write B here. And now, we'll take part C here. C is 2 square root of 6 and we are going to multiply this by 5 minus square root of 3. So applying the distributive property, we will first apply the product 2 square root 6 by 5. Right. So first we are going to multiply these two terms and then these terms. Clear? So what we get here is we can say 2 times 5 times square root of 6 minus when you multiply with square root 3, we have 2 times square root of 6 times 3, right? So, which is also within the square root, correct? So, we get here, let me write down, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 square root of 6. And 6 is 2 times 3, right? Or you can say it is 18, 2 times, let me write 2 steps here minus 2 square root of 18 okay so i am using few extra steps only to uh, show you how we work with square root 18 so we have 10 square root 6 minus 2 times square root 18 is 9 times 2 right so it is 9 times 2 and square root of 9 is 3 so we could write this as 10 square root 6 minus 9 is 3 taking out 3 here 3 times 2 is 6 we get 6 square root 2. So that becomes the equivalent of the given expression. Is it clear? So that is how you're going to do it. Now part D, let's take it on a fresh page. So here we have, <coughs> let's write it bigger and bolder. We have this as minus 27 plus square root of 4 or 5 over 36. How do we work with 4 or 5? So let's do prime factorization of 4 or 5. So let's find factors of 4 or 5. Of course, I can divide it by 5. So dividing by 5, I get 81. And 81 is 9 square, right? That makes sense. So what I will do now is... I will rewrite this expression as minus 27 plus square root of 5 times 81, right? Which is 9 square, which we have seen here, divided by 36, okay? So that is equal to minus 27 plus 81 is 9 square, so we should take away 9 outside and write 5. Is that clear? So it's not necessary to show inside and then take it out. You could actually do it direct. Now, as you can see, 27, 9, and 36 have a factor of 9 common, right? So, uh, you could write, you could divide all the 3 by 9. So, 9 times 3 is 27. So, we get minus 3 plus square root of 5. And dividing this by 9, we get 4. So, that becomes the equivalent expression. Perfect. So, I hope this step is clear. What we did was, here we took, 9 as a common factor. Think like this. 9 as a common factor. So, we get minus 3 plus square root of 5. Clear? And the denominator, it is 36, which is 9 times 4. Correct? So, 9 and 9 cancel and we get our result as shown here. So, I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Now, these strategies are very important, especially if you are working with quadratic equations and radical equations. So I hope it makes sense. Feel free to write a comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.